early life and military career, Sunny Abocha was born on September 20, 1943, in Kano, Nigeria, into a Kanuri family. Raised in a culturally rich and diverse environment, Abocha's upbringing was steeped in the traditional values of his community. He attended the Nigerian Military Training College in Kaduna and later the Mons Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, England, where he received his initial military training. His military career began in earnest in 1963 when he joined the Nigerian army, rise through the ranks, and Abacha's military career was marked by his involvement in several key events in Nigeria's history. He was a key player in the July 1966 counter-coup that led to the ousting of Major General Agi Yaronsi and the installation of General Yakubu Gaon. Throughout the Nigerian Civil War in 1967 to 1970, Abacha served with distinction, further solidifying his reputation as a capable and strategic military officer. Abacha's involvement in successive military coups cemented his position within the military hierarchy. In 1983, he played a crucial role in the coup that brought Major General Muhammadu Buhari to power. Two years later, Abacha was instrumental in the coup that overthrew Buhari, leading to the installation of General Ibrahim Babanjida, consolidation of power. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Abacha's influence within the military continued to grow. He held several key positions, including Chief of Army Staff and Minister of Defense. By 1993, Nigeria was in the midst of political turmoil following the annulment of the presidential election, which was widely regarded as free and fair by Babanjida. This decision led to widespread protests and demands for the installation of the presumed winner, Mosud Abiola, amidst the chaos Babanjida resigned and an interim government headed by Chief Anist Shonkan was established. However, the interim government struggled to maintain control, and on November 17, 1993, Abacha seized power through a bloodless coup, becoming Nigeria's head of state. Abacha's regime, Abacha's regime was characterized by its authoritarianism and repressive tactics. He dissolved all democratic institutions including the National Assembly and the state governments, then ruled by decree. His regime was marked by widespread human rights abuses, suppression of political opposition, and a pervasive climate of fear. One of the most notorious acts of Abocha's regime was the execution of Ken Sarowaiwa and eight other Agoni activists in 1995. This action drew international condemnation and led to Nigeria's suspension from the Commonwealth. Despite these actions, Abocha maintained a strong grip on power through his control of the military and security apparatus. Economically, Abocha's regime was plagued by allegations of corruption. It is estimated that during his tenure, billions of dollars were siphoned off from Nigeria's oil revenues into personal accounts held by Abacha and his associates. This period of kleptocracy severely impacted Nigeria's economy and its international reputation. Escape during the coup attempt in 1995, Abocha's regime faced a significant threat from within the military. A coup attempt, allegedly led by his deputy, the Lieutenant General Oladipo Dia, was uncovered. The details of how Abacha managed to escape during the coup attempt are both dramatic and illustrative of the perilous nature of Nigerian politics at the time. The coup plot was reportedly orchestrated by senior military officers who were disillusioned with Abacha's autocratic rule and the pervasive corruption. Lieutenant General Dia, along with several other high-ranking officers, were implicated in the plot. The coup was supposed to be executed with precision to ensure the swift removal of Abacha and the installation of a new leadership committed to democratic reforms. However, Abacha had a vast network of loyalists within the military and security forces. He received intelligence about the coup plot before it could be executed. Acting swiftly, Abacha ordered the arrest of the conspirators. Dia and other senior officers were detained, tried by a military tribunal, and sentenced to death. 
These trials were widely criticized for lacking due process and transparency, leading to further international condemnation of Abacha's regime. The aftermath of the coup attempt, the foiled coup attempt, provided Abacha with the opportunity to consolidate his power further. He initiated a widespread purge within the military, removing officers suspected of disloyalty and promoting those who demonstrated unwavering loyalty to his regime. This move effectively eliminated any immediate threats to his authority and solidified his control over the armed forces. Following the coup attempt, Abacha intensified his repressive measures against political opponents, activists, and civil society organizations. The regime employed tactics such as arbitrary arrests, detention without trial, and extrajudicial killings to silence dissent. Despite the harsh domestic environment, Abocha's government continued to face growing international isolation due to its human rights record and lack of democratic reforms. Death and legacy, Sunny Abocha's rule came to an abrupt and mysterious end on June 8, 1998, when he died suddenly in Abuja. The official cause of death was reported as a heart attack, although rumors and speculations about the true cause persist to this day. His death marked a significant turning point for Nigeria, as it led to a rapid political transition. Following Abacha's death, his successor, General Abdul Salami Abu Bakar, initiated a process of political liberalization and transition to civilian rule. Within a year, Nigeria held democratic elections, and in May 1999, Olusegun Obasanjo was inaugurated as the country's civilian president, marking the beginning of the Fourth Republic. Abacha's legacy remains highly controversial. On one hand, his regime is remembered for its brutality, corruption, and human rights abuses. The economic mismanagement and large-scale embezzlement of public funds during his tenure had long-lasting negative impacts on Nigeria's development and governance. On the other hand, some of his supporters argue that Abacha's firm control over the military and security forces brought a semblance of stability to Nigeria during a turbulent period. They contend that his economic policies, such as the establishment of the Petroleum Trust Fund, PTF, contributed to infrastructure development, although these initiatives were marred by allegations of corruption and mismanagement. Conclusion, Sunny Aboche's life and career are a reflection of the complex and often turbulent nature of Nigerian politics. From his early days as a military officer to his rise as head of state, Abocha demonstrated a combination of strategic acumen, ruthlessness, and a relentless pursuit of power. His regime's repressive tactics and widespread corruption have left a lasting impact on Nigeria's political and economic landscape. The story of his escape during the 1995 coup attempt underscores the precariousness of political power in Nigeria and the lengths to which leaders went to maintain their positions. Despite the controversies surrounding his rule, Abacha's period in power is an important chapter in Nigeria's history. Offering lessons on governance, accountability, and the challenges of democratic transition as Nigeria continues to navigate its path towards stable and inclusive governance, the legacy of figures like Sunny Abocha serves as a reminder of the importance of upholding democratic principles, protecting human rights, and ensuring transparent and accountable leadership.